Talmud. I came to Olympic Games completely unknown. Nobody knew who is Olga Corbett. And overnight I became a big star. And this is I didn't expect. At the 1972 Munich Olympics, the star performer of the Games was an unheralded 17-year-old Soviet gymnast by the name of Olga Corbett. Her dramatic, daring and emotional performances charmed, enthralled and captivated millions of people around the world. Corbett won three golds and a silver. Few Olympians can say that they redefined their sport, but in Munich, that's exactly what Olga did. I'm Olga Corbett, and you're watching Trans World Sport. 45 years on from the 1972 Olympics, and Olga Corbett is now 62 and living and working in America. Transworld Sport caught up with her to reflect on her glorious sporting career and on her eventful life away from the gymnastics arena. Oh, first of all, I would like to be remembered, smile from my heart, and creativity, and uh, mm, like that, let's do it, <laughs> something like that. Olga was born in the post-war Soviet Union in Belarus. The youngest of four sisters, she was a highly active child who loved many sports, and she took up gymnastics at the age of eight. I was born to do gymnastics. And uh, when I was in first grade in public school, a uh, coach came and uh, asked, who wants to do gymnastics? And I was jump up from my chair and ready to go to the gym. Even I didn't know about gymnastics, anything. But it was in my blood. A rare and natural talent, Olga soon came to the attention of coach Renald Knisch. He saw potential in her great ability, unusually supple spine and charisma. Knisch worked Olga relentlessly hard in the gym, perfecting her revolutionary routines. Up until Olga, gymnastics had been about balletic grace and poise, and suddenly here was a girl capable of performing extraordinary feats of agility with no fear of falling. First of all, I was different. I was short, I was strong, and my practicing was absolutely different. Whatever they said to me, whatever they asked to me, I did it. Next day, I convert my apartment to the gym to prepare to go to the gym and show them how good I am. I was very happy. I never was hurt very badly. I prepared my body to that. Like, I did a lot of conditioning, push-ups, everything, and built muscles to protect your bones. The Munich Olympics were Olga's first taste of an international competition, and she caused an immediate sensation in the team event. On the uneven bars, she ended her spectacular routine with a move that would become known as the Corbett Flip. However, when she took to the bars again in the all-around competition, disaster struck right at the start of her routine with the simplest of mistakes, and the gold medal slipped from her grasp. Olga's reaction to her error was not what was expected from a Soviet athlete. Her tears shattered the Cold War myth that the Soviets were callous, emotionless and mechanical. My tears wasn't because I uh, fell down, 
this is was because I was disappoint my people who trusted me. And then I said, Oh, you crying? Come on, beam and walk in the floor exercise in front of you. Come on, do it. That's what I remember. Olga had the mental strength to put the disappointment behind her, and she went on to win individual gold on the beam and floor. Her groundbreaking performances transformed the image of gymnastics all over the world, suddenly making it one of the prime time attractions of the Olympics and the sport of choice for millions of young girls across the globe. Olga's gold medal winning floor routine remains one of the most memorable performances by any athlete in Olympic history. Her dramatic cycle of success, failure and success in Munich captured the imagination of all those watching. My crowd, it's my crowd. I competed for them and they give me same thing. Because my smile never been just smile. It was from heart, from all my soul. And I think they felt it. The world fell in love with little Olga and she became one of the most famous faces on the planet. She received so much fan mail, around 20,000 letters a year, that she was given her own postman back in Belarus. On the back of Olga's performances in Munich, the USSR's gymnastics team undertook sellout world tours. It was brilliant PR for the Soviet regime, and in 1973, Olga was even invited to the White House to meet American President Richard Nixon. And we came to uh, White House, and we looked around, and uh, like from nowhere, Richard Nixon came to me, and uh, he looked at me and said, "Oh, you little girl." I look at him, oh, you a big boy. <laughs> it was so funny. And he said, you athletes, gymnasts particularly, you are doing such difficult elements, going back, but all the time you are landing on your feet. And he said, I would like to be in politics, same thing. <laughs> At the 1976 Montreal Olympics, Olga was hampered somewhat by injury. Yet she still managed to win one gold and one silver. However, she was overshadowed at those games by Romania's Nadia Comaneci, who won three gold medals and who herself had been inspired by Olga's performances four years earlier. 72 was the Munich Olympics. I was uh, too young to be at that, uh, that games. And uh, we were watching the Romanians, we were watching the former Soviet Union. Uh, we knew that they are the best. And just, of course, Olga was the darling of the Olympics in 1972. She's an icon in our sport. And uh, uh, people still, it's, it's a great um, honor to see that people still remember uh, the Olympics by some of the names who uh, made an impact at their time. Olga retired from competing following the Montreal Olympics. She settled in Minsk and took a job as a sports administrator. She married a famous Belarusian folk singer and the couple had a son together. In 1991, Olga and her family emigrated to the United States, where she taught gymnastics. Her marriage ended in divorce, and she remarried, but divorced her second husband also. Today, Olga lives in Scottsdale, Arizona. This is such a blast to live here. It's a lot of celebrities, particularly in Scottsdale, 
this is such a paradise. And I'm very happy I'm here for 16 years. Olga is currently engaged to Jay Shanfeld. He used to be her neighbor in Scottsdale. I came home from work, I went to get the mail, and she was at the mailbox getting her mail, because we lived in the same complex, but I didn't, hadn't met her yet. And I just said, hi, my name's Jay. She says, my name's Olga. And we just talked for a minute, and I said, you, you have an accent, where are you from? She said, Russia. I said, oh, okay. And, and she said, how many people named Olga do you know from Russia? I said, Olga Korbut's the only one that I've ever heard of. And she stuck her hand out and said, that's me. Nice to meet you. And that is a true story. Thank you. Jay also manages Olga's business affairs and media requests. Despite the Munich Olympics being 45 years ago, she remains a woman in very high demand. Yeah, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't feel the call or more of interview requests and, uh, or an appearance. But yeah, she's still incredibly, incredibly popular. Olga was in the news earlier this year when she sold her Olympic medals and other memorabilia for over $300,000. It was reported that she'd done this after falling into financial difficulty. However, that was not the case. The misleading reports, particularly in the Russian media, which said that she'd sold her medals to save her from hunger, deeply upset Olga. The media was absolutely wrong. They tell, I'm hungry, I'm homeless, whatever it is bad, they said at all. But look at me, I live in best, city in the world, in such a paradise for 16 years, who can afford it? And just me. <laughs> I'm just joking, but it's true. They, what they do, this is absolutely false. Olga told us that she sold her medals so that she could donate to a children's hospital and pet shelters. She also plans to use the money raised to help her older sisters and other relatives. And the money will also help Olga enjoy life in her later years. From here, I'm up straight. Go. Retirement is still some way off for Olga, and the 62-year-old continues to lead a busy life. She remains actively involved with gymnastics through commentating and coaching. She regularly puts youngsters through their paces at a gym in Scottsdale. The environment here is a far cry from the one in which Olga learned the sport back in the former Soviet Union. Now you open legs, come on. <laughs> okay, not bad. Just remember, this is the basic. From this, you will go further and further, much easier. To do this from back handspring to layout, to dub double layout, it's the same technique. It's important. This is the basic. What I always pay attention, extremely serious. So remember that and follow that. You promise? Okay, and always smile from your heart. We are gymnasts, right? That's it. Remember that. No matter you on the gym, in the gym, or at school, you are gym, right? You are different, you are much better <laughs> than everybody else, right? Yeah. That's it, good luck! Give me a hug, <laughs> okay. Olga Corbett changed the world of artistic gymnastics forever with her daring routines and infectious personality. Olga Corbett, UDSSR. My biggest strength of my gymnastics is I really wanted to, to do gymnastics. I, and biggest strength of my gymnastics, I wanted to be somebody, not just ordinary, somebody. And I did it. <laughs>